live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2017. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Lenovo Transform. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman, who is a senior analyst at Wikibon. We are joined today by Julian Box. He is the founder and CEO of Caligo, and Shekhar Mishra, who is the director of product management here at Lenovo. Thanks so much for, for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. So Julian, I want to start with you. Tell us a little bit about Caligo and your business challenges. Okay, so Caligo is six years old now. We're a cloud service provider, but uh, we do things slightly differently. So we were set up with data privacy uh, at its core, which is a little bit of a paradox for cloud, of course, because you shouldn't really care where the data is, but uh, I believe people would care where the data was and what laws were applicable and who could look at the data and so forth. Um, sort of fast forward to today and we've had Edward Snowden and now you've got the EU GDPR, which some people will say is a lot tougher now because of Edward Snowden's uh, 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 stuff that he actually showed was going on. But interestingly, a lot of that stuff was really focused very much on the US, not really about outside the US. So we focus very much around any uh, organization that touches EU citizens. So we have a, a, a privacy play around that. So we do it just slightly differently than a standard cloud service provider. And I do want to get into the, to the, to that new EU regulation you were talking about, but can you tell us a little bit about why, why you chose Lenovo? So there's a lot of history there. Um, right back in the day, I was true blue in the 80s, code in a way, in the mid-range, and uh, I've always had that uh, link with IBM, and then through the acquisition that Lenovo did, we flowed into Lenovo, um, and it's been actually very, very good. You know, some people um, questioned whether that was a good, good move, um, but I saw what they'd done with the ThinkPad and the ThinkRange and the PC, and I was pretty confident it was going to carry on, and. Uh, We've been very, very happy with what we've had so far. Shaker, I want to bring you into the discussion. Sure. We've been talking a lot about you know, infrastructure, things like server, storage, and networking. Bring us into how cloud fits into the Lenovo portfolio and the announcements we've been talking about today. Okay, definitely. So, if you really look at, you know, uh, not the how, but why people are moving towards a hybrid cloud structure, people like, as he was talking earlier, that service providers, I mean, they're looking really for the agility and simplicity of a lot of the public cloud brings. But then, you know, as Phil was talking, that a lot of the regulatory issues, SLA, security concerns, really prohibit them to actually put everything on a public cloud, right? So they want those benefits, but they want that at their own terms, right? The, and the best people who can provide that is one who are able to embrace openness, play with the ecosystem, like partners like Microsoft, Nutanix, and VMware, and also provide a very solid infrastructure to run those things, right? And we as a company, Lenovo, DCG can offer that, right? So those are the key value, but also going beyond that, if you think about cloud is really simple, but once you get it deployed and working, right? That is a big if there, right? And we, what we have done as a strategy is to simplify this, to increase the time to value for our customers. We promote this as a pre-integrated solution, which is really a turnkey with a single support. So customers are not like running around for support or having to deploy it on their own terms, things like that. Yeah, I, I would actually say the idea of cloud is simple. Once you really get into it, it's not so <laughs> exactly. simple. Uh, yeah. I've been at the Amazon reInvent show for many years. You know, they're adding like a thousand new features every year. Yeah. That's not simple. Yeah. Uh, Julian, six years? I mean, that's like multiple lifetimes since you started yeah. your company. The whole server provider marketplace has changed a lot. Can you talk about you know, what, what's been changing your business? And how, you, You're involved with the Microsoft Azure stack. How do you look at the public cloud and that hybrid layer and, and, and envision your role uh, going forward? Yeah, so it has changed a lot. You know, if someone had asked me that we were going to be doing a Microsoft Stack cloud-based system a few years ago, well, I, I wouldn't have thought we would be. But um, because of the way people perceive data now and where it is and where it's held, there's more and more of a demand that I want my data and I want it executing in the location, the jurisdiction that I live in. So, you know, Microsoft and Amazon and all the other places, they can't be in every single country in the world, clearly. The scale's not there, even for them it's not. 
So the Azure stack is a way, I think, that Microsoft's going to attempt to deal with some of those uh, challenges around actually where data is processed. And that gives us an opportunity because we have a lot of clients that won't put their data into the Azure cloud because of where the Azure cloud actually is right now. Um, but when we put it into the jurisdictions we're in, they will, you know, we've got a lot of people wanting to uh, use it. So the sooner we get it, the better, really. So you, you look at it more from a, a actual physical location more than kind of control or governance? Uh, that, that, that kind well, of no, thing? that all goes part and parcel, yeah. but uh, the starting point is jurisdictional position in the data. So with the, with the EU, you're either in the EU or you're not in the EU, clearly, but with the GDPR law, it's switching. It's switching to become where who that person actually is. So at the moment, you, it's all around where the data is. But with the GDPR, it's more focused on the individual. So the individual doesn't have to live in the EU anymore, but it's still protected by the same laws. Um, so people do care very much so where the data is actually going to be. And businesses don't want to be caught out either, and they have the challenges of actually you know, processing the data or controlling the data as it's known. And as a service provider, one of the biggest changes for us is that we're now liable for some of the, um, uh, uh, the processing of what that actually happens to that data. So before it was just the, end, the, the, the client that was using it, now it's proportionally between the two of us. So we have a role as a processor and they have a role as a controller of that data. So therefore, again, it comes down to how do we minimise the risk? How do we uh, ensure that we're meeting the obligations that we have under these new laws? And it becomes easier if you're actually doing it in a jurisdiction that has the appropriate laws or is physically in the EU. So there's a, a thing called an a adequacy rating that the EU gives to a certain set of countries. You can apply for it. Anybody can apply for it. But only about a dozen or so countries around the world actually have it. And what this gives them is the ability to be seen as being in the EU, even though you're not in the EU, from a data protection perspective. So companies are really fundamentally rethinking how they approach data privacy. Um, Shekhar, how are you, part, you know, partnering with other companies and, and helping them work through this? I mean, your example with, with Caligo and, and, and other companies too that are affected. So, um, that is one of the biggest challenges if you think about this. And not only have the companies have to think about, you know, yes, I have to go to a cloud and have a cloud strategy, but the whole deployment model, the mindset of the companies themselves are also shifting and they need to shift. Very simple example I'll give you, for instance, uh, we have a, a very prominent uh, educational institute. Uh, their budget right now was allocated uh, to build three more buildings, for instance, to accommodate, you know, the influx of new students coming in. They're now talking to us, with respect to Azure Stack, that should I move some of that budget to build up an Azure Stack versus building a new building? So no one thought two years back that IT will be actually competing with the construction, you know? I mean, it's very weird to think of that way. And one of the key reasons when you ask them is, look, Amazon is there, but I cannot just go there. We, I need that flexibility, but I need it on my own terms and that this makes sense for me. So we are partnering with people like Microsoft to create those. We are doing innovations on a platform itself from the compute all the way to the networking. So as you asked earlier, we own end-to-end -end stack, whether it is compute, storage, or networking. We have our own IP around it. So we can really create that security across the platform. And then we are not trying to kind of create an island for our customers where you had to go towards a proprietary solution because that's totally against the whole cloud model then, right? So that's why we partner with Microsoft, we have partners with VMware, we have partners with Nutanix, and then other networking players also, but that kind of helps our clients to get the best of the breed solution, the software on a best of the breed infrastructure. Where do you see, where do you see data privacy right now? I mean, there, it, Famously, Europeans and Americans look at look at data privacy very differently. Uh, just individually, consumers, also businesses. Edward Snowden is he a hero? Is he a villain? I mean, there's 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 so many questions, and we're still really a society wrestling with all of this. How how does Lenovo approach this? And you talked about the mindset. So, from a piracy perspective, you see that I mean, we have a very strict policy around the security and the 
what do you call the you know the real uh, the sanity of the infrastructure itself. So we do unique things inside our infrastructure itself. We control our uh, infrastructure lineup, the manufacturing and everything. Um, we have certain features enabled which are default, like IPv6, for instance, right? It won't let a server go on a uh, in a default in a mode where it can be compromised in any way. Uh, we bring that into our software stack all the way from the firmware. So those kind of things are helping us kind of drive and maintain that power solution. So, Julian, Lenovo, of course, has a long history partnering with both Intel and with Microsoft. When I look at the first generation of Azure Stack, there's not a lot of feature differentiation, at least it Microsoft says, this is the configuration you're going to offer, kind of, you know, lock it in. So why Lenovo in your mind? Because there's, you know, another three companies uh, that, you know, two of which have more market share and other yep. positions. So what, 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 what led you down the path of Lenovo? For me, um, it was very much the history that uh, Lenovo and the Lenovo team that they inherited from IBM have got. You know, they led the way when virtualization uh, first came out. I remember when the uh, 440 was released back in ooh, 2001, 2002, something like that. Um, people didn't understand why it was being built. It's because they were ahead of the game. They could see that virtualization was coming. And I think uh, Lenovo has the edge from a uh, just a capabilities perspective. The X Clarity tool is, uh, I think, is the best management tool that's out there right now. And uh, reliability, you know, I've been using their technology for a very long time now in all its forms, and you can see why they're number one because they genuinely hardly ever, literally, I, I can hardly think of in the last six years we've probably replaced a couple of spinning disks. That's about it. Really, is that reliable actually? So, so, it, Julian, I want to get your input. You've been looking at the Azure stack here. Um, Azure Packs existed for a while. Yep. We've been talking about Azure Stack for a couple of years. This will be a 1.0 release. Yep. What does it mean for your business and your customers, and how much do you feel, that, are there things that you're looking at beyond the 1.0 uh, that, that will expand it even further? Yeah, clearly uh, on the first version, it's not going to have every single feature that you want it to have, um, but it will have a lot of the things that our clients are calling for right now. And I'm speaking to them right now, and they, they're prepared to wait for the extra features to come along, because right now they can't get any of it. So we're giving them you know, a big chunk of it, and they'll, they will take uh, the extra features as they come along. As to the point you mentioned a little bit earlier about it, you know, it is what we're given, that's true, but people want it to be exactly the same as the, the one in the, you know, the big one. So we don't care that it's not exactly the same. That said, it will be deployed alongside our, our standard infrastructure serving offering, which is we call Cloud Core, and that is uh, again, it's all Lenovo equipment, uh, not just not just the Azure stack. And um, you know, we've we've been we're 100% flash. We guarantee any workload. We do things very very slightly differently in a, in a lot of cases. And you combine these two technologies because clearly the Azure stack does stuff that Cloud Core doesn't, and Cloud Core can do stuff that is your cut doesn't do. So we actually think we can give a combination there that you wouldn't typically be able to get. And of course, they're right next to each other running at super high speeds and not different clouds going across, you know, much slower, higher latency links. So lot, lots and lots of positive stuff. Yeah, and, and, and Shaker, from, from your standpoint in product development, uh, you know, what, what excites you the most about Azure Stack and you know, what your customers expect today and what which you see, see in the future from Lenovo? Um, you know, you asked a question earlier that, you know, that is fixed and is that a constraint? Actually, in my view, I feel that other than minor tweaks, customers actually don't want a lot of variations mm -hmm. because that actually simplifies their environment, right? And they want to make sure, because today there's a lot of overhead in management. So what my group is really focused on is not about so much on what the infrastructure layer is, but more about what the end-to-end -end solution is. And not just from you know, a point product, but how the customers are consuming in the entire life cycle of it, right? So all the way from when they start thinking about Azure Stack, for instance, how do you make sure that what kind of data is right on Azure and what is not? How do you make sure that how much of Azure do they really need? How do they make sure that you know it's you know ordered and shipped promptly, and then they can deploy it? 
And by the way, once you deploy it, how am I going to maintain it, right? So our on-site professionals go and train them. And then once you have it deployed, how do I do ongoing management? And when I have issues, who's going to help me? Because this is now built with multiple things. So we think of all those end-to-end -end consumption, and that's what the whole mot motivation around Think Agile is, to make all of that simplified for our clients all the way from deployment to support to management, things like that. That's yeah, I mean, great, great point on the consistency because if you ask any customer, what version of Azure are you running, they'll <laughs> laugh at you because Microsoft <laughs> takes care of that. Exactly. And you would want in the customer, the affiliate exactly. environment, it to be similar. Yeah. 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 yeah, and for us, the fact that they're actually going to come and you know, commission it for us is one less thing I have to organize, I have to right. resource. You know, literally the rack turns up, they do the commission and give us two cables to plug into our core switches and away we go. Um, so the you know the time to delivery is far quicker for us, um, and as we want to roll these out quite quickly around the globe with everything else that we're up to at the moment, that's another massive plus for us. So we actually like the fact that it's coming in this set form, and these guys are going to look after it for us at that lower level, and we're operate and run it with our clients, and that again is is a huge benefit for us. Julian Shekhar, thank you so much for joining us. So it's thank been you. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from Lenovo Transform after this.